Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Indrani Bhattacharya, Associate Professor, Department of Museology, University of Calcutta. Today our subject is Indian Culture and Course Museology. The module is Collection History, Collection Ethics and Collection Policy of Museums. The learning objects of this model are brief history of collection in famous world museums like Asmolean Museum, UK, British Museum London and others and famous Indian museums followed by ethics of collections and collection policy in museums. History of collecting objects are the most exciting chapter in museum history. Different famous museums of the world acquired their objects from personal collection, royal collections and donation from renowned personalities, exciting excavations, adventurous expedition, extensive field books and also gathering objects from our day-to-day -day life and use. Every object has its own autobiography. The total story of collections by different museums could meet an epic. Now come to the point collection history in the world. The private collections were a familiar idea in ancient Greece and Rome. Aristotle no doubt received natural history specimen of Asian origin from the scientific observer who was accompanied his pupil Alexander in Asia. Now look the picture of the Asmolean Museum UK. It is the first university museum in the world. In 1656 John Tradis Kent inherited his father's collection and added many specimens of his own journey. The collection was primarily connected with natural history, but it contained each section of curiosities and some scientific instruments also. Tradis Kent willed it to Elias Asimole who added it to his own collection and gave them both to the Oxford University London United Kingdom. In 1683 the Asmolean Museum was opened. Now come to the British Museum London collection history. Sir Hans Loane, an active naturalist as well as a royal physician proposed in his will that parliament might acquire his great personal collection and he offered it to a fraction of its cost. The British parliament voted money to buy the collection and established the British Museum on the site it still occupies in London, Bloomsbury. The museum was opened to the public in 1759. Now come to the Indian scenario and Indian Museum Kolkata. Indian Museum Kolkata owes its origin from the Aesthetic Society Museum in 1814. Dr. Nathaniel Warich a Danish botanist was the first honorary curator of this museum. The board of trustees was formed in 1866 and the entire collection of the society was transferred to the board of trustees. The present day building and houses the collection and it is open to the public in 1878. In the words of Wallach, 
द इंडियन म्यूजियम इज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन मेंट फॉर द रिसेप्शन ऑफ ऑल आर्टिकल्स दैट माइट बी सेंट टू इलास्ट्रेट ओरिएंटल मैनर्स इन हिस्ट्री और टू एलुसिडेट द पिकुलरिज ऑफ आर्ट और नेचर इन द यूज द नेचुरल हिस्ट्री कलेक्शन ऑफ इंडियन म्यूजियम इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एडवर्ड ब्लिथ एन अदर साइंटिस्ट सक्सेडेड वॉलेज एज क्यूरेटेड द स्पेसिम विल ट्रांसफर्ड टू द न्यूली इस्टेब्लिश इंडियन म्यूजियम इन एटीन सिक्सटी सिक्स ब्रिथ मैनेज टू एक्मुलेट ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ जूलॉजिकल स्पेसिमेंस इन द म्यूजियम एलॉन्ग विद द कलेक्शन ऑफ बॉटानिकल स्पेसिमिन ऑफ प्रीडेसेसर्स विच अल्टीमेटली फॉर्म द न्यूक्लियस ऑफ द इलाबोरेट नेचुरल हिस्ट्री कलेक्शन ऑफ दिस म्यूजियम द आर्क्योलॉजिकल कलेक्शन ऑफ इंडियन म्यूजियम इज अ वर्स्ट कलेक्शन एट इट ऑल्सो इनक्लूज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कलेक्शन हियर इज अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द वारूद गैलरी ऑफ इंडियन म्यूजियम कोलकाता एलेक्जेंडर कनिंगहम एक्सकाविटेड द साइट भारूत इन 1873. The architectural fragments are shown along with similar collected species species from Bodh Gaya. The archaeological collection continued to expand during 1830s when James Prince was the secretary of the society. He added the Asiatic Society's small collection of Roman coins, which a fairly large acquisition of such coins in July 1833. In the subsequent years, the society's numismatic collections continued to grow with private contributions, mainly from the company's officials. For example, in 1834. Arthur Connolly offered to the society a large amount of Gupta coins. Here are some pictures from the archaeological collection of Indian Museum of which Egyptian gallery is the most attractive to the people. Indian Museum also has a good collection of geological collections. specimens and in 1840 a museum of economic geology was established in calcutta and the collection was left with the society in 1856 the geological survey of india or gsi was established and all the materials were transferred to the museum at Seven Hastings Street, Kolkata. After the establishment of Indian Museum, the geological collection was transferred to the present building, and now all these geological collection are under the Geological Survey of India. Here is a photograph from the Geology Gallery of the Indian Museum, Kolkata. Next, we come to Governor. Museum Chennai. It was a famous museum with a rich collection and established in the year 1851. The Government Museum Chennai is the second largest museum after the Indian Museum. The collection had its origin from a gift of a collection of 1,100 geological specimens. by the madras literary society to the government in 1851 sergeant edward belfour served the museum in an honorary capacity afterwards the museum acquired rich collection of bronze objects amravati sculpture natural history specimen etc by excavation gift donation etc Nagpur Central Museum is also a famous museum in India 
This museum established in 1863 and also known as Ajib Ghar. The Nagpur Central Museum has collection of coins, sculptures, inscriptions, all are collected by gift or purchase or by excavation. The museum has a good collection of Bombay School of Paintings, articles of day-to-day -day use, handicraft items. It also houses natural history collections like reptiles, mammals and others. Patna Museum Bihar also started on 3rd April 1970 has good collection and sculpture, coins, thangkas, paintings, textiles, natural history etc. mainly found in and around Patna Bihar. The famous Didargan Jyoksi in this collection is very familiar to all of us and here is a photograph of this sculpture. The museum has a fine collection related to the first president of India, Babu Rajendra Prasad. The new Bihar Museum project has started in 2009. Victoria Memorial Hall, Kolkata was established in the year 1921 in the memory of Queen Victoria who died in 1901. It has collection of oil paintings, watercolor paintings, stamps, coins, books, manuscripts and so many things. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Shangralai, formerly known as the Prince of Wales Museum of Western India, Mumbai, was established in the memory of the visit of Prince of Wales in 1905 was opened to the public in 1922. The primary collection was acquired by the trustees and the Sir Rotum Tata bequest. The archaeological collection were started with the pioneering effect of archaeology, Sir Marcel and Sir Hindi Kosan. Ilavad Museum in Uttar Pradesh was established in 1931 and it has a priceless collection of Bharut sculptures, Tirakushtas from Koshambi, Rajasthani miniature, paintings by Nicholas Rorick in those of Bengal School of Art autobiography of Pondit Jawaharlal Nehru and others. Some of these are donated to the museum, some are acquired through gift, loan or purchase. Orisha State Museum in Bhubaneswar dates back to 1932. It has rich collection on archaeological sculptures mainly which were collected through excavation in different sites in Orisha, coins, medals, arms, weapons, etc. are purchased or donated to the museum. Wide varieties of manuscripts are a rich treasure of this museum. Orisha state is very rich in minerals and rocks and these rocks and minerals are in the storage and display of this museum which were collected from different sites. Broken pieces of Ashoka and lion, carved ivory objects and other materials are also in the display of this museum. The Ashutosh Museum of Indian Art, University of Calcutta is one of the pioneering and the first university museum of India which was established in 1937 and this museum is leading in some 
excavation in Bengal and Dadin Purbo Bangla opened only with five, five exhibits rising to 1228 at the end of 1937 and 2423 in 1938 and 6000 by September 1939. At the end of 1941, out of total 7,000 exhibits, 500 large stone sculptures buried underground, 400 stones, 1,246 terracotta pieces, large number of paintings, for cut objects, metal and ivory objects, wood carvings, textiles, miscellaneous objects, shifted elsewhere. Galleries reopened in January 1945, shifted again to a separate building in 1960. Since 1967, the museum is in the present building. Now the present collection of this museum is about 25,000. And the excavation at Paharpur in Rashahi district of Bangladesh were carried out on the initiative of Varindu Research Society and the university participated in it. This museum participated in the excavation in Bangir in Dinajpur and Chandra Ketigar in North Chubishpargur in West Bengal. Lots of excavated objects are housed in this museum. Here one could find some of the pictures of the collection. The National Museum New Delhi, an exhibition of art consisting of selected artifacts from various museums of India, sponsored by Royal Academy of London with the cooperation of the Government of India and Britain was on display in the winter months of 1947-48 in the galleries of the Burlington House London was organized. After re returning from London, objects were exhibited in the state room of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi in 1949 and then transferred to the National Museum. Here are some collections which are very interesting in the National Museum. Now, the next important museum which we should uh, speak is the Seller Jang Museum, Hyderabad. The collection was mainly acquired by Nabab Mir Yushup Ali Khan, popularly known as Seller Jang III. In 1914, Salar Jang III, after having the post of the Prime Minister of Haiti, the Nijam VII, Nawab Mir Ushmar Ali Khan, devoted his entire life in collecting. The famous Veld Rebecca, beautiful collection of gems and jewelry, European paintings of world famous artists, clocks and others the rich treasures of this museum. Indira Gandhi Manu Shanghalai is the premier institution in India in case of anthropological museum and ethnographic museum which was established in the year 1977. Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Manav Shankaraloy. Bhopal is the biggest anthropological museum also. The museum possesses a huge collection of material culture related to the relevant communities and it also showcases the intangible culture of some communities. And all of these are mainly collected by field service or exploration. Billa Industrial and Technological Museum, Kolkata. The 
pioneering science museum in India BI team was established in 1959 initially the few galleries were devoted for explaining the fundamental of science through laboratory type demonstration exhibits most of the exhibits of these science museums are fabricated in their own workshop and Bidla Industrial and Technological Museum Kolkata has some rare objects in their collection also. Besides Bidla Science and Technology Museum, nowadays there are more than 30 science museums and science centers in India and most of the objects of these centers and museums are fabricated in their workshop. Now we should shift our point to the collection of Natural History Museum and so National Museum of Natural History was established on 5th June 1978 in New Delhi. The Natural History Museum and the regional museums in Mysore, Bhuvaneshwar, Bhopal, Shwai Madhupur all have original specimen or stuffed specimen mainly collected through field survey, gifts or some of them are seized by the customs. The next part of the module is the ethics of collection. During collection ownership of the object and the implication of accepting the item should be examined thoroughly. The museum the museum should examine the reasons for accepting an item into its collection without compromising the standard of care and access relating to the existing collection. A museum should cooperate with other museums and institutions as well as communities and groups when collecting, recognizing that the others involved in the same way have a stronger claim on it. During gift or bequest, the museum's intention regarding the object's value and use should be specified ambiguously to the donors and public acknowledgement must be made. Ethics of collection are based upon the underlying values of honesty, fairness, accountability to the society at large. Collection must be made complying with the International Council of Museums Code of Ethics and the national and international legislation in vogue. When collecting, all the convention and laws governing collection should be followed strictly. These are Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict or the Hawk Convention in 1954. Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export and transfer of ownership of cultural property 1970. Convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna 1973. Convention on biological diversity 1992. Unitred Convention 1995 and the next is convention on the protection of the underwater cultural heritage 2001 the next one is convention for safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage 2003 the others are indian preserve act 1878 ancient monuments preservation act 1904 the Antiquities Export Control Act 1947, Antiquities and Art Treasure Act 1972, Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Each and every museum should have a strict collecting policy. Museums should have active and systematic collecting policy 
according to its mission and vision statement. Each and every museum should draw up an active collective program following its collecting policies. The governing body should adopt and publish a written collection policy that addresses the acquisition, care and use of collection. The policy also strictly explain the position of any material that will not to be collected but it should be conserved, exhibited, etc. At the end, in a nutshell, we summarize the total module. This module gives an outline of the history of collection of different museums in India. It is not always possible to give a thorough analysis of the history of collection of each and every museum in India because India is a very first country and it has so many types a large number of museums so here we should only concentrate on the collection history of some of the important museums in Indian continent and then the module point out the fundamental points of ethical issues related to the collection of objects and the third stress is given to the collection policy which also varies from museum to museum depending on the types of its collection different museum have different types of collections the material compositions of the objects in a museum are also varied so different museum has its own collection history but during collection one should follow the ethics strictly on ethical practices should never be allowed and museum should collect all its specimens and artifacts or other objects according to its collecting policy and in the next module we'll discuss about the different methods of collection of different types of specimen in a museum thanks for visiting epg bakshala